Yes, we're still talking about emotional intelligence. And today's focus area is its impact on children, or rather, why children need to be taught emotional intelligence. And the irony of this is that I probably, like a lot of other adults, never considered emotional, emotional intelligence as it related to children until I met Quinette, an EQ practitioner who focuses on children. Quinette Enilama is a child education consultant, a published author, an emotional intelligence coach, and lead facilitator at No Boy Left Behind Academy. I really like that name. Quinette is driven by the need to create a positive impact in every child. And over the years, she's had to work with a lot of parents, teachers, schools, and children of varying ages to achieve this objective. So welcome, Quinette. I'm really quite excited to have you here today. And like I was saying just now in my intro, it never occurred to me that emotional intelligence and teaching children emotional intelligence was a thing. You know, so it's really quite interesting to, to delve deeper into that. Into that yeah. So my first question is, why should it even matter to children? Why should EQ matter to children? So my response would be, why shouldn't it, right? Okay, <laughs> okay so um, sometimes we forget as parents, caregivers, aunties, uncles, we often forget that these children are going to grow up to become adults. True. And whatever we give them, whatever we lay now as a foundation is what's going to carry them till they become adults. So why not teach them now? Why do you want to start dealing with a broken adult? Why not lay the foundation now? But a lot of parents would say they're too young. They're not too, I don't know. They're not too young. They're not too... So I think, you know, let's not say... what. Let's not, let's not demonize parents or, you know, just... For lack of a better word, say parents are this way. I would often say this. How do you want to raise your child? What kind of child do you think you want to raise? If you see your child as a good investment that you're going to release to the world, you would start doing it from an early age. Right? Okay, so let me go back. What is emotional intelligence? Good. We've been talking about it <laughs> repeatedly for a while. Let's I'm sure it. everybody has different, you know, um, different definitions of it. I would just say this simply, mm. right? Emotions, emotional intelligence is simply just like the word states, how to navigate your emotions intelligently by choosing yourself, mm -hmm. giving to yourself, knowing yourself because self-awareness mm. makes you do better. Mm -hmm. communicating rightly, how to communicate rightly with others, mm -hmm. and also how to communicate and interpret whatever communication is going around you correctly. Because whatever interpretation of what people are saying comes, it, the onus is on you. It's mm -hmm. not on them, mm -hmm. actually. So if you say something to me, how do I interpret it? Mm -hmm. That's me. That's emotional intelligence. How you communicate with people, that's emotional intelligence. How you manage your feelings intelligently. That's it's sounding like... Uh, okay, I get that. Aren't children, aren't children too young? Okay, what is even too young, Seth? Do you know that you can teach an an 18 month old child about emotional intelligence. So this is how you do it. Children mirror what they see. Before I begin to teach a child, I often say to parents, you have to parent yourself before you begin to parent children. So before you teach a child emotional intelligence, you have to teach yourself emotional intelligence because whatever you're saying to the child, what, what, we're not in that era where we, we used to say, do what I say, but don't do what I do. Mm. Now, it is doing what I say and do what I do. So whatever you're teaching the child, you should be the one practicing it as well. So mm. you can teach children from as young as 18 months. And you can use pictures, cards, and whatever you do, children mirror after what we do as adults. Mm. Sometimes you see your children acting out, or children who are around you acting out, and you're wondering, where did you pick that from? They picked it from you. So it is what you give. That's mm. what they're going to take, and then they'll replicate it back to you. 
Isn't this just basic parenting? What does EQ have to do with all of this? Basic parenting. Um, what, we, what we resist a lot of times, we don't know how to correct. The reason I'm saying that is this. Now you talked about basic parenting and what does EQ have to do with it? Parenting is a lot. It's a lot, and a lot has to go into it. It's beyond betting a child, sending the children to school, don't do this, don't do that. These are the values you should have. No, there is more. If I have to be an intentional parent, mm. I have to understand emotional intelligence. I have to, how do I communicate with my children? Mm. How do my children communicate with each other? Mm. When your children are fighting, how do you separate them? Do you, do you place one above the other? Do you teach them how to disagree appropriately? Do you tell them how to, there's the no boundary zone. How do you communicate with them? What are the things you say to them? These simple things are emotional intelligence. Don't say to them, you're very stupid. And then your child has an issue with self-confidence and you're wondering where it came from. It was the way you communicated to the child. Wow. It's not, parenting is a lot. It's a lot. We have to, just the way you have someone who is going to do self-development every time I want to become a better version of myself. The same thing with parenting. You have to keep learning the skills and equipping yourself. There are tools out there. However, get the manual from your creator, who is God, and then go ahead and learn. There are a lot of people teaching stuff. So just learn how to communicate right with your children. Learn the tools and learn your children. Hmm. Because if I want to know you, hmm. If I have to know you, if I have to communicate, it's to know you, really. Mm. I would want to observe you. I want to spend time with you. I know the things you like and the things you don't like. How do you speak? You know, what are your trigger points? You know, what are the things that tick you off? And I, I try not to do that. I'm not trying to say I walk on eggshells around you, but I try to understand it so I can communicate with you better. Okay, so that is for the adult that's teaching the child emotional intelligence. Yes. What of the child that is learning emotional intelligence? How do you teach that child? That child. So, like I said, you teach by mirroring, mm -hmm. one. Secondly, these things are practicalized all of the time. Mm -hmm. So when you do things, now one thing that's prevalent in our society here is we say, don't do this, but we never tell them why. So the reason I'm saying to you not to do this is because, so for example, when children are, um, when you give a child, tell the, give a child an instruction to carry out and they don't do it. So mm. you call the child back and say, these are the rules. So for example, my kids, mm. um, the kids I tutor when I'm coaching them and I say to them, I'm giving you an instruction. Mm. You have to have a calm face, the right tone of voice and um, accept what I'm saying to you, disagree appropriately. And so the child comes, the child has the right tone of voice the right demeanor, but the child has a frown on their face. They go ahead to do the instruction. I'll call the child back, say, you did, your tone of voice was good. This was right, this was right. But your face, your expression wasn't. Yes, you carried out the instruction, but your face, it still tells me that you are not agreeing with me. And this is the reason why I need you, all of you to agree with me. Mm -hmm. I'm not just going to allow the child go because if I do, I'm sending the message to say that it's okay for my tone of voice to be right, right? but I can still have a frown on my face and I'm doing, of course, I'm, haven't I gotten the job done already? Do you understand? But we have to always do that. You have to teach them. You have to correct them. You have to guide them properly. You also know that sometimes we don't listen to our children. We don't mm. listen to them. And in listening to them and in hearing them, mm. we're able to correct them. Not necessarily collect, correct them, but guide them properly. Because children come with their own innate gifts and sometimes we can learn a lot from them. Mm. Okay, so I'm going to use myself as an example. That's why I was smiling. I remember in secondary school, I had done something wrong. I had been sent to the principal and she was telling me off. And for whatever reason, the, the look on my face was very expressive. And I realized, I was told after by another teacher that was there that she wanted to slap me <laughs> because the look on my face really aggravated her. And it's not the first time that has happened to me. A lot of the times, what I'm looking like is enough to annoy the person so much that they begin to have very negative reactions. 
does that mean that if I was the child you were teaching, how, how would you... How would you retrain? How would you deal retrain, with me? Retrain you. So you know the body body language. I, I I'm not. I, I can't remember the statistics statistics right now. But it says more than when we speak verbally. Mm -hmm. So my body can be saying a lot. My body can say that I'm tense. My body can say that I'm relaxed or comfortable. But I'm saying something totally different. But what if I didn't? I didn't even realize I was doing this. I was because you I didn't, was maybe thirteen. Because you didn't know. Nobody told you. Mm. So for me, if I were in her shoes when I was when I'm done, mm. I'll probably call you separate. You know, call you aside and say to you that, do you know that the way you were talking, with your body language, was sending a different kind of message to me. And it really did upset me. And I'm sure you didn't know that that's what you were doing. Mm -hmm. And then you would realize that, oh, I didn't mean it that way. I was only trying to be expressive. That's all I was trying to do. I wasn't even trying to be expressive. I didn't know I was doing anything Do you understand? <laughs> and you know, because of the way our parents mm -hmm. and guidants in the past were trained, mm -hmm. they don't understand certain things. So for them, that might be very rude. You know, that, that thing you did was rude mm -hmm. because they didn't understand. But for right now, if I were to retrain you, I would say... Your body language, your tone, you're talking to, you're talking to an adult, you know. Mm. And wh however you're communicating to the person is very important. I need you to be aware of that. Because self-awareness does a lot for the child, basically, really. Mm. It's to learn how to self-regulate. Mm. Self-regulate. How, God, how is, does is, a child self-regulate? Yes. <laughs> By teaching them. So you teach them from a young age. Right? How young? Like I said, from as young as 18 months, if you had a deliberate and intentional parent. So let's say you start from five, which is the formative years of children, between the ages of five to seven. And just remember that it's a process. It's not magic. It's not going to happen overnight. But trust me, you're going to see the fruits of what you're teaching this child. Mm. Gradually, when you keep reminding, remember, reputation is a deep law of a longer lasting impression. The more you repeat it, the child... A lot of times, the child is going to always remember. A lot of times, children or parents, they get tired. But I've been singing this thing. I've said mm -hmm. it over and over again. Mommy, daddy, continue. Mm -hmm. you ha it's, it happens to us too. But I told you not to wear this. Oh, I forgot. You do it again. That's, mm -hmm. You're an adult. Mm -hmm. Children, they would always forget. You know? mm -hmm. But keep reminding them. Keep teaching them. I told you not to do this. That's not right. Don't talk like this. I do it a lot to the kids I teach. When they're talking to me, I go... I can't hear. It's, my, it's like default for me. I can't hear you. And, but Miss Kuna, I'm talking to you. I can't hear you. You're shouting. And when you're mm. shouting, you're not communicating with me. Okay. Miss Kuna, boy, you're frowning. You're slouching. I'm not, and, and we can be there for hours until the child, you know, comports themselves. And guess what? The next time the child wants to communicate with me, the child will know that. Miss Kuna to say, I'm, she's not hearing me. So I, I know that I have to, you know, go this way. And, you know, it seems like you're, 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 you're trying to change them. You're not trying to, you're just teaching them. But this takes time. And it's, a lot of parents process. are working. Well, I get that. We live in a very chaotic and disruptive world right now. Mm -hmm. True. And parents have to go to work. I understand. But you have to put things in place that will help you. You don't work all the time, right? Mm. Let's say you work from Monday to Friday. Mm. Saturdays, there's Sundays, there's two hours every day mm. or 30 minutes every day. Mm. Now I'm saying every day, two hours on, at the weekend is enough. 30 minutes every day and be deliberate and intentional about it. You're going to make a lot of impact. It's a long time. Okay, it's so a let long me, process. Let me... Let me ask you this. What is, the what is the disadvantage of not teaching your child emotional intelligence? You have a broken adult being thrown what into society. What does a broken adult look <laughs> being like? Being thrown into society. <laughs> we both know that. You see people on the... You, see, you communicate with people every day or you have interactions with people, not even your colleagues, just normal people every day. Mm. And you, you would say something to them and their reaction beats you. You're like, did that just get you angry? And you're wondering... What happened to you? That's mm. not what I meant. Mm. I would say 75% of our society, permit me, were not emotionally intelligent. You're right. You're we're very not. true. You're very correct. So if you don't, how would your child be able to communicate with people? How would your child have social skills mm. if you don't? 
It's not just, it's not, it's not even about the home front. How do they communicate mm -hmm. when they get out there? Social skills is part of emotional intelligence. How do they act? Are they act, able to accept constructive criticism when people give it to them? Or the, the next thing you see is that they're throwing a blow. Why did you speak to me like that? Well, they were yeah. trying to correct you. Mm. Now, these are the disadvantages. So you have to, you have to teach them. Okay, so before we round up, something just came to mind. Social media. A lot of children today, yeah, they can stay in their room all evening on their phones, on their pads, you know, on their te technological devices. How do you teach that child emotional intelligence when most of their interaction is online? How do you want to begin to teach a child that you didn't start teaching from the right age or you didn't start teaching early? Okay, so I made a mistake. Now I want to retrace now you my want steps. To, but you have to, you know that you have to be patient about it cause, because you're not going to I don't be, have time to be patient because you, I'm but always you, at work. You have to be. You have to be. It's like telling a doctor, I need, my, wife, my wife is in labor or I want to have a surgery. I need to do it now. They have to take their time. Do you want them to make this is life and death? Like I said initially, if you understand that your child is an investment, you will treat that child with the utmost care in the world. Just the same way you, you guard all your investment, your properties, your house and everything. That's the same thing you do to a child. You've left your child to social media to train. Why? Because you don't want to engage them enough. There's so much to teach them. Take the phone from them. You know, give them, you know, let's have phone breaks here and there. There's so many things to educate our children. So many. Okay. Okay. This, this clearly is a topic that we can, we can be on forever. So three quick wins. How can we begin to retrace our steps and teach our children emotional intelligence, even if we didn't start when we should have? The, I, I would say no better way to start. Than, the, best, the best way to start is now, right? So um, start first things first. As parents, you have to teach yourself first. It will make the work easier for you because you'll be frustrated. Mm. Because if you don't know, and but I'm telling you, and the child doesn't understand or the child doesn't see you practice the same thing, you're going to have a problem. I know we're rounding up. Let me give you a quick example. I remember having a boot camp for kids sometime, and one of the kids there went back home, and the father said something, and she said, but you're not even emotional intelligent. And Quinette said this. The father got upset and gave me a call and said, I told the child, I said, what you said was right, but you did not communicate it right. You don't just say to your dad, that you're not, no. You would have said, Daddy, that's not the way to do it because this is emotional intelligence. Guess what? The father came back to me and we had to go through several classes to teach him because he saw the changes in his child. Mm. He was getting frustrated. I don't understand what she's saying. What, what she's saying to me. Mm. So the parents themselves have to first be educated before you can give that education. You can't give what you, what don't, you have. don't have. Okay, so that's one. Yeah. Two more things. You can't give what you don't have. Secondly, you know that we always fight what we don't know. Okay. Same thing where you can't give what you don't have. Mm. So learn to know your children. Mm. The key actually is with them. Learn to know your child. Mm. Don't, and if you, if you really want to create positive change and impact, you will do it the right way, really. The options are always available. Mm. Options are always available. You do it the right way. Don't say, um, you know, this is how it is now in 21st century. You know, this is how kids are raised. No. What are the stand, what are the things you what does your home run by? What's the I would always say, what constitution do you have in your house? Mm. What are the rules in your mm. house? What are the value? What's your value chart like? You know, mm. does your child child have that? What are your child's goals? You as the parent, you have to work hand in hand with your child. Mm. Do not if you if you understand, you'll be able to connect and correct properly. I see. Yes. Okay. Three. <laughs> like you said. <laughs> um in this part of the world, we, we don't listen. We, we have conversations to argue. Mm. And listening doesn't come to us naturally. True. So we should learn to listen. We shouldn't think that we know it all, especially even as adults. Even when we're dealing with children. Even when you're dealing, no, you don't, because children can teach you. Children, I thought I was patient when I started this journey. They taught me patience. Wow. Yes. So listen. OK, so. You, the adult, need to become emotionally intelligent. Yes. 
what was the second one? You need to, the third one was you need to connect to you correct. Connect and understand. to correct. Yes. And the and third you one, listen. yeah, you need to listen. Quinette, thank you. Thank, thank, you, for, you, thank, thank you. you for having me. I'm really hoping that I'm going to get quite a few adults messaging us and saying they want Quinette's details because honestly, children are the leaders of tomorrow. So if we don't start teaching them emotional intelligence now or even retracing our steps, I like to say when I'm old, there will be nobody to help me because, hey, we didn't teach them the right skill sets um, on time. But thank you so much for being a part of this. Um, hopefully, we'll have you again soon sometime. It would be an honor to be here again. And thank so you. So we're done. We've come to the end. John, Helen, and myself will quickly round up the show. So please, please stay tuned very quickly um, whilst we round up the show. Thank you.